All right, we are live. Today is Saturday, November 11th, 2016. And we have our Saturday webinar with Brooke. And hey, we have Angie, Bree, Brian, Christine, Christy, Joanna, Michelle, Stephanie, C, I'm Max, and um, there will be a couple more people here. One of them is Gali, and second uh, is unknown yet. And um, uh, I guess Brooke is already in an analyst state. So I welcome Brooke and I invite her. Um, I guess usually what we do first, you do you do a monologue. Whatever you want to do, a blessing, a monologue for whatever num whatever number of minutes you want to do, and then we start doing the questions. And Brooke is channeling divine mother. Welcome, Brooke. After a long break, maybe after a year, welcome back. Thank you, Max. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Mm. So let's all collectively just take as many deep, deep inhales and exhales as we need to, to just get grounded in our bodies today. Expanding our abdomen on inhale. And then exhale, we're just bringing our belly button to our spine. So we're just starting to feel into our body now. And this is a way for us to ground energy collectively in this group today and also in our personal lives. The breath is the divine and the breath takes us back to our connection with the great mother. And with that, I call in my highest level guides, guides, ancestors, divine feminine representations of the mother, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Sophia, Oshun, White Buffalo Calf Woman, Isis, and I ask that this collective's group, I ask that our guides be brought through for all of us as this is a collective transmission. Though I may be the only channeler, we are all channeling together higher information as we reside in our higher hearts together, as I'm connecting a golden thread with each and every one of us right now. Now seeing that golden thread, bringing us into a circle, 
I'm seeing us surround a great grandmother oak tree in the middle of us. If you can see it in your third eye with me, please do. And this great grandmother oak tree is also pulsating and vibrating golden threads of wisdom and light deep, deep, deep into her roots of Mother Earth and also high into the heavens of the Cosmic Mother. And we're just seeing these pulsating, sparkling, golden white energy. They can look like spheres. They can look like softball size lights or just stardust as well. We're just seeing this energy ground us all the way to the deep, deep core of Mother Earth. And today it looks like it's a citrine crystal, this core of Mother Earth in the roots of this golden grandmother oak tree is just wrapping around this citrine crystal and grounding us into our energy. And with that, we're using this energy, going back up the trunks, back into the visceral level of our group, connecting with this energy going upwards in ascension. As we know that ascension isn't possible without descending into Mother Earth. These golden white balls of energy are cascading out through the tops of this grandmother oak tree and connect, connecting with the great sun of the cosmic universe. Blessing each one of us today as we return into our hearts and back to our breath. Namaste. Namaste. So, Brooke, your video is not visible. You're turned off. If you can press the video on, that would be nicer. My video says it's video on. Says it's on. Hmm, turn it off and turn it on again. I can see you. Wonderful, I cannot. In any case, uh, my first question is, um, yeah, everybody please type in your questions and I will pick, uh, pick the questions which are good and maybe I will group them. So the first question is, can you, so in my meditations, I get the answers, I, get on the other side, I get the answers, but I never see the visuals. Very, I never see their clear visuals. I see the light, fuse, diffuse light, but never, you never come to me basically as a visual. Sometimes people show up, but then they kind of, it's half a second and then disappear. So never longer than half a second. So I invite more of the visual and more of audio contact. And I would uh, invite the initiation into better meditation and a better contact and a clear contact if you can give to everyone. Thank you. I am not able to personally give that to everyone. <laughs> but I do have some recommendations. In terms of clear audience and clairvoyance and developing greater connection with uh, visuals, which is clairvoyance, clear sight. My highest recommendation is a steady daily meditation practice. And that's not just a five minute or 10 minute quick meditation practice. It's something of dedication. And when we're really starting to develop this muscle, 
it's at least 20 to an hour type of dedicated meditation. And some of that is just breathing. Some of that is just mindfulness, cultivation, compassionate, loving kindness, uh, more of the bodhisattva meditation of the open heart. But with that, we train this muscle and to be able to take guided meditations to a different level. I really recommend a holistic approach to meditation. There are thousands of styles of how to meditate and they're all beneficial. We are each a unique channel. So we each develop in our own unique ways. So one form of meditation will not work for one person and it will work for another person. And sometimes a conglomerate may need to work for one person and sometimes only one will be the ticket in, for instance. I highly recommend shamanic journey in our meditations so that we start to cultivate the imagination because that's the thing is if we are blocking or we can't see certain realms or uh, realities, it's because our imagination is, is not coming through. And sometimes that's because we cannot trust ourselves to go into a sort of mysterious realm in that way. So yes, I highly recommend training your imagination, just like we were when we were growing up and starting to open up our eyes to perhaps imaginary friends or perhaps just the imagery of a beautiful book or a beautiful sky. Really do connect with nature as well to help with your imagination. My greatest allies are the fairy realms and they have so much exuberance and excitement for when we begin to communicate with them. But first, there has to be an established rapport, of course. So not just walking out your front door and saying, fairies, where are you? We must communicate. But literally going into nature daily or at least three times a week and just softly pause into the body and to be with nature. And we start to cultivate a sort of agreement that we are channels of divine wisdom, divine sight, and that we're open into opening into imaginary realms. And with that, we're opening into our own imaginary realms, but sometimes opening up to the fairies or for others on this call, um, especially ETs or benevolent starry beings that can really aid us as well in opening our sight as well. But of course, always have the intention, always have the intention, but always have the non-attachment to the to the intention as well. So for instance, I intend to see information in form of an object today. What is that going to be? Okay, there it is. All right, well, I'm not attached to what that object has to say. It's just giving me some information. And when we start to do that, we really start to play. And that's the greatest thing about clairvoyance and channeling and any sort of uh, mystic practice in this area is divine play. So again, play with your own imagination, play with others' imagination, laugh, and also play with the fairy realms as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, when Jim is channeling, especially because you know Jim started channeling with me and I saw him growing into channeling, and then I discovered he can affect the, the reality. He can, whatever comes out of his mouth when he channels happens. And mm. I see how it is his imagination. It's really Jim imagining things and then they manifest. <laughs> <laughs> so when I analyze things within me, I say, oh, that's real. And that's imagination. That's I imagined. <laughs> and now the question is, where is the border? Um, where is the borderline between what we imagine and what becomes real? How do we, basically the question is how to, to manifest better. Mm. <sighs> mm. 
Look deep within. Look deep within the soul and its variations of inner peace and its variations of desire. Start to articulate precisely what it is that you desire with yourself, with others, Conscious manifestation happens when we're consciously speaking to it with others around us and in our lives, friends, family members, community support. Be excited about what you are intending to manifest. Don't go to it in a sense of It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. Take the duality out from it. An alchemist is non-attached because they understand the non-dual nature of reality. And these are greater lessons of the universe that we start to understand particularly in the sense of, for instance, gender, what is the fluidity of gender? Are we really just masculine embodiments or feminine embodiments? In alchemy, there's something called the holy hermaphrodite or the third gender. And so this awareness of non-duality will be really helpful in manifesting. And along with that, there's something else coming through. For you, Max, in particular, I know you're fond of orange and the color orange. So always having that in your manifestation, using color to protect and to empower what it is you are intending to manifest is very helpful, I'm receiving. So using your imagination again, color, smell, scent, all these things, but we really have to transfer it into what it feels like already acting as if feeling as if seeing as if 100 percent no doubt about it already happening manifestation it's truly an art it's too, truly a craft and again not one person's way of manifesting is another so that's why i'm giving giving some varieties of examples and perspectives right now but the greatest way to manifest is truly getting into your body and just feeling what it is as if you're trying to manifest a beach vacation, for instance, for your family. Imagining what it feels like to be sitting on the beach with your family, to your loved ones aside, beside you, playing in the ocean, to what kind of drink you have at dinner, to what the dessert is like what you're wearing, what's on your feet. These are all ways that we are tapping, in, tapping to back into our more creative feminine nature as well. Not to say the masculine isn't creative, but there's a yin sort of feeling, a yin word feeling, which is a more receptive attitude to manifestation which is kind of the the background of manifestation because manifestation is of course active as well you're being very intentional you have very direct clear knowing of what it is you want to manifest and you're sharing that with other people but there's this sort of artfulness and this sort of mysterious mystique about it that represents 
what I'm receiving now, the cosmic womb. So the womb being the dark vessel that we are all birthed from. It's very mysterious and it's very unpredictable at times. So how can we bring spirit into form is what we need to be asking ourselves when we intend to manifest something of really holistic, potent caliber. Thank you. Wonderful, yes, yes. Avatar is a manifestation of God. Yes. Mm. Um, so I will let uh, Christine ask a question in a second. So we're taking questions here in, in chat in this window and also on uh, YouTube. Uh, on YouTube chat, type your questions and we'll, I will pick and choose. Um, Christine, go ahead with your question if you like. Yes, I'd like to know if um, if I'm able, if I'm doing better at protecting myself from taking on the energy of the people that I um, that I send healing to. I understand that I was holding it in and I was getting sick from it, and now I'm I'm hoping I'm doing better. Mm. How's your uh, body feeling, especially um, your muscles? I just got over a bad cold after four years of not getting any cold. So I'm, it's still stuck in my chest. I'm still coughing a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, after colds, I usually have a bad cough. So my, my worry my primary worry is that <clears throat> I got um, breast cancer from uh, holding it in. And after going through a lot of healing with other people, they said, well, it's in your energetic field. It just hasn't made its way to your physical. So I'm hoping I'm doing better. You are, my dear. You are. <laughs> okay. You're particularly in how you're speaking about this and how confident you are and how clear you are about it. That's just nipping it in the bud right there. Your throat chakra is very gold is what I'm seeing. It's, it's quite in a level of empowerment that is exactly how you understand yourself and exactly how you understand the universe and the energy that is within you, which is in your close circle and which is in the larger scheme of things. So you feel very, very grounded. And I'm seeing the green too around your heart chakra as well, which is a neutral balance color, you know, right in the middle of earthly energies and higher cosmic energies and it's right where you need to be in that divine love of yourself thank you very much thank blessed you. be blessed be. You. there is a follow-up question from michelle uh, about <laughs> the self-sabotage michelle do you want to speak up go ahead okay um i can't help but notice that um, as I do deeper, different kinds of spiritual work, for instance, like um, working on past life uh, situations, um, trying to clear those and not being um, much like um, Max, I do not see so much. I feel energy very strongly, but I do not have the clairvoyance um, yet. And so what I've noticed is that I maybe I'll say no to something like the universe gives me an intuition that says do this thing and I say no. And then I tend to fall flat on my face and then get into a loop of self-destruction again. And then I crawl out and then I do it again. 
or like something outside of me or in me, I'm not really sure, hits me like another ton of bricks or a big veil of darkness and then I crash and then I come out of it and then I just keep noticing a pattern. This just mm. keeps happening over the last year. So it'll be like high intensity, what I think is good, um, i.e. like angelic energies or healing energies and then somehow my human mind kind of like almost crumbles in a way or like it cannot handle more or I believe I cannot handle more and instead of doing a healthy thing I do an unhealthy thing um, I'm getting I am exhausting myself with this mm. with, I'll just take a nice cleansing inhale. <sighs> yes, my dear, I see it is exhausting. And when you immediately started to speak about the self-sabotage, I saw you going out in the rain on purpose without a raincoat. So there seems to be self-trust needed to expand in yourself. And of course, I know you know this, <laughs> especially because we've talked before, that it's unconditional self-love for us to get into a deeper level of self-trust. But even before that, it's just gratitude. Self-gratitude for being human, first of all. Choosing this reality. Choosing to incarnate at this time with some of the most powerful energies in the cosmos. Revolutionary energies for the self to witness the self and the self to witness others and the self to witness greater collective energies. Gratitude. We're all in this together. Gratitude for understanding, bringing awareness to your patterns of any sort of self sabotage or any sort of patterns, period, to perhaps it'd be good to take the self sabotage out of it and just to identify these are my patterns. And I'm very aware of that. But this is also, I want to mention, where we have to bridge the metaphysical realms with the realms of the mind. And how you cannot have healing with one, one without the other. So as much as we can do energy healing, shamanic healing, clairvoyant healing, Reiki, working with our guides, we have to be so diligent on retraining our mind and retraining our thought patterns. Sometimes instead of using the word retraining, we talk about it as unlearning. So how can we unlearn patterns of the mind and patterns of the body? Where is there tension that needs to be relaxed? Where are there thought patterns that need to be shift in order for me to feel more at ease and more in alignment with the divine truth that I am. Sometimes it's difficult to get into our divine will because of our psychological um, areas that just need a little more TLC. But they do, I highly recommend, need as much attention, if not more attention, than other forms of healing, other forms of Again, working with the different realms or any alternative holistic um, ways of healing. It goes hand in hand. They're very, very much comparable. So with that, I highly recommend, dear, to go into inner child work and to go into where your inner child feels like she has to sabotage herself in order to survive because that's the root of this issue. 
is that it's a survival mechanism that's happening right now. Okay. Um, an addendum to that, since you mentioned that, also paying attention to the mind, it has been recommended by my daughter <laughs> that I re go into therapy, which I've had decades of. Um, does that, I feel like, I don't know if that is necessary or a good idea. Mm. How does that resonate with you? I'm seeing that for you, my dear, that you need to explore some different types of therapy. Mm -hmm. And just stick with it. Stick with it. If you've had a few therapists that you haven't been um, in alignment with, for lack of a better word, keep looking. And I feel like they will appear. And also know that you can start, you know, really getting into your body as well. Do you have any sort of um, Tai Chi or yoga practice? Um, I do yoga every time I go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't, not specifically only yoga as a regular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're already inclined to choose yoga, I highly recommend this path. Mm -hmm. It is one that I am on as a yogini, mm -hmm. and it's one that really does cultivate this really sharp, clear mind. And yoga, of course, is not just about the as asanas, right. so the standing positions. It's about the breath. Yes. And it has to do a lot with sitting yeah. and sitting and sitting with contemplative efforts and efforts of non-attachment. But with that, we will see our wounds come up okay. immediately. And we have to have some sort of integration with that as well. We can't just you know, ha have all these emotions go through and, okay, I'll keep on doing yoga. There's a certain point where we really need support. So perhaps finding someone who has a yoga or background and understanding uh, meditation with the mind and also a, a, a type of holistic therapy as well could be extremely beneficial. Super. I do know those people. Mm. <laughs> That's a be. Thank you for being so open and willing to share your heart today, dear. Oh, you as well. It is always my pleasure. Mm. Thank you. So, Brooke, um, the question I want to sound is the, the one which is on everybody's mind. So the history just turned sharp angle. Can you comment, can the Divine Mother comment on uh, give us some guidance, what to expect, where we are, where, where are we moving? Mm. What, shall, how, what, 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 <clears throat> what um, emotional and mental directions can we use to adapt, I guess? Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Max, a very important question. Hmm. The sharp angle has shown itself for the entire world now. This is a sharp angle in consciousness. It's one of the angles that we've been exploring in communities of awareness for decades now. For some, it's frightening, and for some, it's just like any other period in history, and for some, it's both. So knowing that everyone has their own feelings about this and awareness, levels of awareness about this is a way for us to bridge this really high level of compassion for everyone experiencing their own 
emotions in forms of perhaps greater engagement in their communities, social communities as well, more activist communities. But a great, what I'm receiving as a mother's wisdom is just this, this great joy of being in a compassionate heart and this knowingness that this is the lesson of love, truly unconditional love. It's not in the human realms easy, you know? And in other realms, it's not easy as well. But when we start to really see that all we are is love embodied, then we can approach these situations with really strong mindfulness of our own wounds and triggers and also the projections we are receiving from other people's personas, right? Because a lot of the personality is coming through. The idea, for instance, perhaps we can ask ourselves, are these leaders in in so-called power people or are they ideas that the collective unconscious has manifested into reality? Uh, love, um, freedom. So basically, the polarization has changed. I have experienced that many years ago. I guess it was 1998 plus minus a couple of years, where Russia went through pol- polarization, huge polarization. Things just some demons, some demons were untied, left free. So the whole society polarized and lots of freedom came out of it because you didn't have to com- comply anymore. Mm-hmm. And love also comes out. The freedom comes out with polarization. Uh, American uh, had that in 60s, like 62 to 63 to 69, where the society polarized and because things went in different directions, there is tons of opportunity for freedom and there is energy which just as as a gift for love. So I invite any comments on the direction. Mm, Beautiful. Yeah. So for in order for us to, to enter greater areas of love for ourself, for one another and for others, there has to be a sort of identification of the shadow, right? So we can't just, move on without identifying our fears. So what is this about this great movement in the United States, for instance, with a new presidential elect that's triggering fear in me? What is that that it's triggering fear in others? What is that that is triggering fear in most of the publications? What is it triggering fear in my children? bringing awareness to our fears and bringing awareness to the subtleties of how that's being reacted, right? Because we're in a very reactive time if we're not conscious about it. And we start to, you know, take larger leaps and larger impulses without that stillness of peace within. So again, a way to cultivate stillness and peace is bringing it back into the heart and bringing it back to the breath and bringing it back into affirmations of sovereignty from anyone outside of your divine higher self. So sovereignty from any outside forces, sovereignty from anything that is of a distraction, sovereignty from outside opinions, sovereignty for anything that is not your own conscious being, I would say, because freedom is not going to be what it 
or freedom, the freedom movements or the evolutionary, revolutionary uh, movements that are happening right now aren't going to look like what they have been in the past. They're going to look like something very, very different. And we're actually not quite sure what they're going to look like. And that also can trigger fear in us in the conscious community that we see this movement coming and we believe in it and we know it and we know that love is guiding, guiding us all and connecting us all together. But we still, we don't know exactly what it looks like and that can really trigger fear in us too. So just being, bringing aware, excuse me, bringing awareness to that and that we are not in this by ourselves that we may be sovereign, free in our own being, in our own understanding, in our own way of how we hold, or, hold and carry ourselves, but we're co-sovereign with other people. It's a co-effort of sovereignty of the self, if that makes sense. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, there is a nice question, Carolina just came up. Can you voice your question? Uh, yes, um, I was just asking um, your Divine Mother, can you please um, tell us um, what Divine Mother is, please? Beautiful. Is it, uh, the question was, is it uh, Mother Mary or Mother Gaia or else? Yes, thank you. Thank you. She is everything. She is all spiritual religious icons of the feminine. She is the earth that we walk on. She is you, beloved, and she is me. She is everything. She is our children. The Divine Mother represents the goddess and she represents thousands and thousands, millions and millions of people and persons, of energies in particular. But the way that our human mind can understand it is through, yes, religious icons and yes, our own mothers. And yes, how we mother ourselves within. But she's beyond that energy. Thank you. I, I, I wanted to, yesterday I was thinking like, what is my new understanding of spiritual masculinity and femininity? And kind of my definition was that um, Every aspect is in both masculine and feminine, but the, the tiny difference which I could define is like masculine is going wide, growing wide, expansive, and then seeding, separating itself from the seed which carries the information, and then let it grow by itself. And feminine is accepting the seed, and again growing, but growing inside, and then separating something big. So masculine separates divide itself, seed in small seeds and feminine grows first and the seed and then separates from it. But other than that, I, on spiritual level, I cannot define more what is the difference. What is the what is feminine aspect of God and what is masculine aspect of God? Can you clarify and comment? Beautiful question. And it's one for us to each ask ourselves as well, just as you did, Max. That's a brilliant, brilliant example and so unique to your own uh, perspective of reality. And that's absolutely brilliant. That's the thing with these subtle energies is that we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean for me? What, how do I personally define this? Not how any ancient text has defined it, not how any New Age article on the internet, not how this channel <laughs> is defining masculine and feminine. It's truly going into our own understanding, sharing it, 
and sharing it with others because this is a bridge that we can really understand relationships with these energies, right? In all forms of relationships, there's a sort of imprint that we carry um, because of you know programs that we've grown up with, television, books, fairy tales, archetypes, even archetypes. We can talk about the archetype of Aphrodite, right? The Venus uh, love goddess of beauty, of, of richness, of art, of music, yada, yada, yada. But really, you get to explore your own energy of Aphrodite by inquiring about her and inquiring about masculine archetypes. What does it mean for me, for instance? And that's the, the expansiveness of, of understanding energies is that we understand it for ourselves. And we're aware of our own uh, limited perspective, right? Because the universe has thousands and thousands of perspectives. So we understand that we have this own taste, but that it is also limiting because it's so beyond, beyond what we know. So for me, for instance, there's Shakti and Shiva energies. And in some things that I study, Shakti represents patterns of energy, right? Moving patterns of energy. And Shiva represents grounded awareness. But for instance, if you go into yin and yang, energies are slightly different. Yang is more active, yin is more receptive. There's so many different esoterics of energies. And with that esoterics of thoughts, that it's wonderful. And I encourage everyone to start studying them and to start really seeing how it is we've evolved in consciousness, but how important this is for us to understand feminine masculine dynamics because it's being played out in very obscure ways on all these stages of, you know, more government stages, of more pop culture stages, of stages of our children, right? Of these you know, beautiful star children that are coming in and saying, I don't have a gender. You can't put a, um, you know, gender on me. I don't understand what you mean by that. You know, the, just pure, pure awareness is being born now through these wise, wise children, star seeds, crystal children. There's probably some new words I don't even know about. So looking beyond that, but also inquiring and having communities inquire about that as well, because we really start to under understand intimacy, issues of our own intimacy with ourselves and with other people and our most beloved relationships to our maybe our partner or maybe our children, maybe our brother or sister. We really start to understand, you know, these so-called dynamics. We'll be able to lift them up and to be able to greater unify us as one. Thank you. Uh, Kina, would you like to come with uh, your questions? Specifically, I like the question about how to get answers from Divine Mother. Can you speak up? Read it. Uh, so basically, Kina uh, asks, um, uh, are there any other techniques like pendulum cards, uh, smooth and log that obtain responses from from divine mother yes um definitely you can connect with her with cards oracle or tarot cards when you're asking a question mm, pardon you can ask um you know just, just playing around with it instead of asking higher spirit or divine light or God or goddess, you know, you can ask divine mother, can you please show me what it is I intend to see when we're using cards or when we're working with crystals? Um, uh, what is the word? You can endow anything with her energy. You can endow your crystals with mother goddess energy you can endow your oracle deck with mother goddess energy just that consciousness and awareness crafting around that right a lot about a lot of magic is crafting and a lot of it is 
complete belief as well too and a lot of it is play it's divine play so approaching it you know very playfully with with her energy in anything that you do i mean when i drive my car i know it's protected by the divine mother for instance um and know that you can cultivate that own divine channel as well because when i'm channeling the divine mother right now it's essentially my higher goddess self so they're the same thing wonderful thank you yeah i started doing tarot cards and i love to get answers whenever i need right it's it's on you just you know pull a few cards and you get the answers um joanna are you available to speak up is john around i will read you. oh she's around joanna can you speak up might be late there okay I'll, I'll read her question just a sec the questions jump okay um i'm in a process she says i'm in the process of learning galactic languages i have received the message that i am two-thirds of the way and joanna is wonderful brooke can you come and give some message to joanna she's um starting to uh, learn galactic languages and she wonders and she, she was said she's two-thirds of the way basically the question is galactic languages oh <laughs> well ingoi koya lai ki eo e kui koya lamo Ejikayu loi ki, emoki loi, yaikoe lampo ki, inego ki ko, yunani kuril ko, minkai koe la, eja umai kui, ela kui zai kwa, aikui, eisli ayolo, ea kui alai kui, emoi kayala, amo e raiki, ikui la, emoya, ejo. Well, my dear welcome and, and please keep speaking we're so here to support you in your in your divine galactic language and we just encourage you to speak it more and more Eo to koro na yaha sata tao kusho to ana eo soro no yo sho na ya au so to wa ya hana na ya to toro ko ya ha eo to to ana shania no no koro ta 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 isa ta ta isa ta ta o mahana ai ka ta ma la ta ba ta ta ura ha ya na o ma ya o ma o ma bru ala mana ya o ta o ta o ta na ya na ya sa ta ta o kasha ni ana na o toro o sa na ya na o so a ya kashuro to na ya na na o toro wa ya sa ha o to ko wa Now, Brooke, it's up to you to translate. <laughs> I'm not going to translate that, actually. It feels like it is translated. All right. Um, Brie asked a wonderful question about men. Can you voice it up in English? In English, sure, I can do that. Yeah. Um, I've been hearing a lot of information in regards to water, the element of water, um, carrying the divine feminine energies, being the divine feminine life source. And so my question is in relation to that, um, how may we use, how can we better use water and intentional water healing to rebalance the divine feminine energies on earth and for ourselves mm. excellent question my dear thank you so much for that 
Yes, water is life. Water is sacred. If we aren't all familiar with, which I think we are familiar with the um, no Dakota access pipeline happening in North Dakota, sacred stone camp, please do tune into that. There's been recent um, news in the uh, Obama administration moving into awareness to what it means for First Nations people and indigenous tribes all over the planet, not just in the United States, to have and to be one with sacred waters again. But in terms of our cultivation with water, um, anything goes, right? <laughs> so what I like to use when you're asking that question, my dear, I saw a variety of chapters. So what I like to always use is water on my altar, and I like it to be blessed by myself and connecting with um, Divine Mother energies. I use some essential oils, especially rose, for instance, and I put it in the water so it has this sort of um, endowed energy as well. I highly recommend getting a water purification, filtration, alka alkalizer, excuse me, whichever one that you feel called to, to only be drinking the purest form of water because that is our birthright, is to have pure water. And so much of the water that we've consumed, at least speaking from me in this body of living, growing up in Missouri, was tap water. And the amount of fluoride in water and the amount of fluoride in so many bottled water companies is just absurd. So really start to be you know, a more conscious consumer when you're buying water at any place and demand that your water be the highest vibration and ask for that to be in your space at all times. We can also do water blessings with the sacred waters outside in nature. So going into any creeks, rivers, oceans, lakes, and meditating besides them, perhaps meditating with our hand in the water just briefly and then blessing ourselves, a sort of cleansing purification. If you have access to any sort of um, spa with hot tubs or cold plunges or cold pools, or if you're traveling, for instance, to a different place, look for that so you can connect with water as you're traveling or as you're just healing your body. Water is one of the most healing and perhaps is the most healing energy and element that we have, that we are aware of here on planet Earth at least. So being really intentional in how you pursue that and how you engage with water. There's something else coming through. Your tears are sacred water as well. So when we cry, cry knowing that we're, t that we're crying the sacred and that we're crying water for a reason. Um, when you were started asking the question, I was making a pour in the water in, in the cup. <laughs> uh, uh, I just realized uh, recently that any body of water is conscious and um, of course, everything is conscious, but the water is conscious in a very human way, in a very human time, time pattern. Yes. Um, Brooke, you were asking the question about men and uh, feminine. Can you voice it out? Voice it up. Um, I was asking a question. Oh, sorry, Brooke, Bree. I'm sorry, Bree. Bree, can you voice up oh. the question? Um, in reg a question that somebody else had or my question? No, your question about men. All right, I, I can oh. voice, I, w I can speak to that. Uh, basically you asked if, uh, how could men uh, embrace their feminine side? Basically, why, why the men have problem embracing and what would be the way? Is it, do you have a comment about it? Oh, it was Brian, I'm sorry. 
no blue, problem. green. All right. <laughs> Brian, do you want to speak up? <laughs> Hi, Brian. Hmm. Oh, wow. Isn't that the question of the universe? <laughs> Blessed be. Um, I'm seeing that this has to do with the mother wound that we all carry deeply. The mother wound, if you're not familiar, is the wound that we are often born into this reality with because of our disconnection with mother nature, our disconnection with our bodies, and our disconnection perhaps with our own mothers and our disconnection with the mother archetype in general. And that is a deep, deep wound of the universe is how the masculine men who identify are to embrace this energy that was never there for many to begin with. It's, it feels foreign for many, is what I'm receiving. And that foreign triggers fear, and it triggers, you know, resentment and confusion, deep, deep confusion of the self is going on in a lot of men right now. Nurturance is not what we know it to be in a lot of realities in this world, unfortunately. But that is changing and evolving. And how I'm seeing you, Brian, being your conscious divine male self is being that sort of figure for other men in your life to go to for support, nurturance, an open listening heart, non-judgmental presence, and for un unconditional love. You carry that, my dear. It's a jewel. So I encourage you to bring that into your relationships with other men. Any sort of male relationship, right? Not just the, the spiritual male, but any sort of how can I be more nurturing? How can I be present in my own tenderness, in my own deep vulnerability with others? And that way, we really will start having revolutionary energies when our men can really hold that tender space for other men. Uh, Angie, are you available to ask your question? Yes, I am. Thank you. Hi. Um, I am channeling a fairy goddess named Trina. I don't know if you can see her right now, but we've been conscious channeling and um, I'm ready to do the trance. Um, I would just recommend that I could just allow trance to happen. Even, mm. um, am I ready? <laughs> No. 
<laughs> it's like I feel like I'm asking stupid questions because um, Gina answers every question. If you could see what she is doing, can you see how she's connecting people? Mm. Yes, thank you, my dear. I immediately saw Trina to be in colors of white, um, light blue, and diamond. Those side, those side of, excuse me, those sort of crystal shades. And I'm seeing that she's a protector fairy for you, and that she she is your your main companion. And she loves you so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she just adores you. Oh, she adores you beyond. Oh, it is so sweet, this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> oh, I see her help helping you when you when you do your hair, when you paint your fingernails. She's just there adoring you. And, <laughs> yeah. And just, Oh my gosh. In terms of going into trance with her, I think it it feels to be quite fine. And it feels like you kind of already are in trance with her, to be honest. What I'm receiving yeah, I, I is, so. is, yeah. is that it may not even be necessary for you. So mm -hmm. there there really is no other you know, trance I'm feeling the message for you, my dear, is no other special tool that you don't already know how to do or already have inside of you you already exactly. you already have a a very clear blown up channel um mm -hmm. so you're already there my dear you totally are you're already there but if you do decide to maybe experiment with just meditation for longer periods of time um mm -hmm. just ask for grounding energies so either grounding your room with a tree energy or just grounding in, you know, walking barefoot outside before you go into trance, just really bring that in because I'm seeing that you're susceptible to going kind of far out there and <laughs> it might be difficult for you to come back. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. always stay in your, what I recommend is to always stay in your body. You know, always stay present with your lower chakras, mm -hmm. just mostly your sit bones and your buttocks and having that be really grounded in your chair and connecting with the sensations of the chair and your feet on the earth and having that be really grounded so you can come back and be fine. There's no dissonance, right? We don't want any of post-trans dissonance um, going on, but sometimes that does happen and it's totally okay just bringing awareness of uh, protection in forms of groundedness before you maybe experiment on your own with that. Interesting because um, uh, I think it was two days ago, I went into the first time trans channeling, but I channeled uh, um, from the other side. Mm. And, um, it felt uh, like the most beautiful thing I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. I was like blown away, you know. So I feel like I want to do that again and again and again. <laughs> and also, I'd just like to share with you that Trina is touching just about everybody's lives that I come into contact with. Yes. She, she's um, pranking everybody. Yes. <laughs> She's, she's running a mock, <laughs> but she's ultimately she's connecting and hitting people, you know, and it's so divine. I don't even know what time is anymore. Uh, we just play, you know. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's like I've fallen in love all over again, and everybody mm. else is, 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 is like feeling it as well, you know. It's beautiful. It absolutely is. And I feel that so much too. I, yes, thank you so much for sharing that, my dear. I'm, yeah, Trina is here with us mm -hmm. in this whole group. And I, 
so thank her so much and I have such gratitude for her of bridging the realms and being such a carrier of light for everyone <laughs> yeah thank you because um, everything that you have said up to now uh, she said to everybody else the same thing like exactly except you've got more of a vocabulary than me um, so but the, the message that you're bringing across is exactly the same as what Trina is doing. Are we connected? It's a stupid question. <laughs> you see, that's what how she's talking to me right now. She tells me like this, the answers get given to me all the time. Absolutely. I feel like an abundance of everything. Absolutely. And I would also recommend, my dear, of releasing your judgment and especially your judgment about questions because there are no stupid questions. And if we yeah. have, if we have any sort of that ego come in from when we're mm -hmm. going into working with our guides or thinking, Oh, that, I shouldn't ask the obvious. Why would I do that? I already know the answer. That's going to block everything. So mm -hmm. always just asking curious questions and not, and not, you know, taking our human mind or our ego to it, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing is a stupid question. Nothing, nothing, nothing is. <laughs> well, it's uh, beautiful. I can, I feel one with you right now. Mm. It's so divine. Now. It is. I cherish, I cherish the Thank energies and the, and the goddess for bringing me here and with you and Trina. Divine, beautiful, thank you. Thank you. Blessings, what my is dear. Your, what is your name? Brooke. All right, thank you. Mm. We will meet again. No doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> carry on, you and Trina, carry on. We will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will ask my question, which kind of rose recently. Um, even in presence of teachers, my mind sometimes is dragged down to lower dimensions. And from lower vibrations, everything seems impossible. Everything seems materialistic. And, you know, they ask simple question, do you have, do you remember miracles? And I don't, basically. Uh, when I when I'm lifted up, the miracles kind of become natural, and when I'm going down, not very much down, just a little bit down, I, I'm not I'm di become disconnected. So, any guidance here? Any guidance here is invited. There is a part of me which is still very suspicious. <laughs> what to do here? Suspicious? Can you go into that a little more? Oh, you don't even understand. I think. You know, that is a natural state for most of the people. You, you know miracles exist, but at some point, they, you are so much beyond the whale, you, you cannot see them. You cannot feel the prayer. You cannot feel the God's presence. So, um, and the question how to deal with it. Uh, basically, my suspicious part sometimes takes over. I hear uh, God speaking through someone, and... Uh, it doesn't reach my soul. It's so blocked. Yeah, so there's a few things, Max. Thank you for this question. It's one that um, I do understand and one that I know a lot of people have in the spiritual community um, concerns about as well. But I would ask us all to discern and understand what is spirituality and what are miracles exactly. Because there is still energies of sacredness and the secular always wrapped together, right? When I was channeling about non-duality, that's part of it, is that even moments that are simplistic, dull, 
of maybe we can't feel the enlightening energy and our you know holy healthy happy beings at all times that's totally okay that's totally okay you are still a divine human perfect being in light and in the arms of div- of the divine mother and so i'm seeing this release of spiritual perfectionism for all of us to understand and to be aware of <clears throat> that miracles and feelings of miracles are happening even if we can't tap into them today or even if we wake up tomorrow and we don't feel like a miracle is coming it surely still is and that's a sort of really true belief and faith that we are all cultivating here on the human planes and that faith goes beyond the veil thank you thank you thank you um brie brie <laughs> Can you read up a couple of questions from the other chat? Yeah, sure. Um, We had a question from Christy, um, and she's asking, she says, I'm looking to see how to realize the resentment or blocks I put up to not allow people in. Mm. This is from Christy? Yeah, Christy Campbell. Okay, let me look in here. So there's definitely, I'm sensing Christy, a, a tenderness here of a wound. Of being in this life, um, a sort of rogue. And that rogue mission that you were given has made it difficult for other people to understand you and that has built up walls and what is now looking like resentment for when people are starting to look over your wall and to cheerfully say hi how are you what are you doing i'm seeing people in your life inquire about the magic that you are. I'm seeing them being curious. Their energy is lightened around you. And it can be challenging. I empathize with that. But no need to worry. You're very aware of it. So just come back into your heart and into breath and into patience too. Love is patience here. And I'm seeing that self-love is a great teacher for you in patience with yourself and for other people who are starting to slowly and happily and magically infiltrate your beautiful life. Brooke, can you read, uh, Brie, Brie, can you read the uh, next question? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, Next, we have a question from Kina. She asks, is there a feminine and a masculine aspect of each chakra? Oh, beautiful question. All right. Hmm. Oh, I just got so warm with that question. Okay. Okay. 
Yes, because the chakras contain all the information of the universe and our realities, they all contain masculine and feminine energies. Yes, they do. That's interesting. So um, then they can be out of balance, I'm assuming, and that can perhaps be one of the reasons why um, chakras get clogged up and um, don't work as properly until they're rebalanced? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is, this is a brilliant question, and this is a different level of energy medicine, I feel like that is, that really needs to be explored. So I really encourage you, uh, my dear, to explore that. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is pretty huge because now mm -hmm. I'm relating this to the chakra points of the earth and mm -hmm. the chakra points of the solar system um, and how it's all interconnected and how it all stems from within us individually as we are creating it from the prisms within us <laughs> um so may i link this back to water then and intention mm. so perhaps putting intention into water you ingest um intending for the water as you drink it to rebalance the feminine and masculine energies of your body which then helps rebalance the energies of the earth and so on oh Hall wonderful hallelujah <laughs> absolutely my dear yes this is such a profound example of the holographic universe great a great job <laughs> <laughs> And it's fun, too. You can make it fun. Um, then, actually, I would like to take this a step further. I know we only have a few minutes left. Um, but if you could maybe help expand this to the next step, maybe using crystals, crystal companions, um, as assistance for this. So would you recommend certain crystals that we may use in this process of rebalancing these energies? Um, and with water as well? Mm. Mm. This channel is not too familiar with the crystal people. I love you, I love you, not too familiar. <laughs> this is clear quartz and this is uh, Celestine. In terms of your question though, I'm feeling start with the quartz family, especially clear quartz. Um, Things that are only source energy, I feel like. Don't go into any energies that already have a lot of um, stories, right? Metaphysical stories about them. Go into pure essence crystals. So I'm seeing clear quartz, um, selenite, for instance. Um, even I think Herkimer crystals are pure source energy as well. Thank you. Um, Brooke, now is, it is 9.28 um, Pacific time. Uh, whenever you want to finish, um, I, I, I suggest go ahead with the blessings and uh, take it from here and then you, you have an appointment at 10, right? So, so plan your time. I do. Yeah, so I have about uh, 15 minutes or so, definitely. Wonderful. Uh, one one question before one, one before, question the, before the before the blessings is um, Kina asks. Um, and I'll, just a second, Kina, Kina, Kina. Uh, basically, when the divine energy. Okay, uh, why sometimes when we feel holy energy, why it hurts? Mm. I'm sensing that it's because it's an initiation to awakening. That's why it hurts. 
And that's totally okay. I have hurt from holy experiences. A lot of that has to do with past life. It's what I'm receiving. And a lot of it has to do with coming in to your fully embodied self as well. So integrating the realms of the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the physical bodies. It can certainly hurt. Absolutely, you're not alone. Thank you. Um, we do have thousand more questions, uh, but I don't want to start the big new topics. Uh, so I suggest you go for, take it from here as a monologue. And if anybody wants to follow after Brooke and give your blessings, that would be fine. And after that, I go channel. So I will take a break and then I will go chat after that. So now, Brooke, it's your microphone. So just so I'm clear, Max, this is just a general channeling for me to do, including a blessing. Whatever you want to do with your time. Uh, uh, because we have tons more questions, but I just suggest you do a blessing and whatever you want to do. Beautiful. Great. Thank you for being a wonderful facilitator today, Max. My pleasure. <laughs> So I'm just asking what the goddess, what cosmic energies have to say for us today as we have joined. I'm seeing the violet flame come in. I feel like there's a strong Saint Germain presence in this group. And so we're just going to take a moment to honor that wisdom and that high alchemy that St. Germain represents in his many lifetimes and essences beyond. I'm saying to you that he is sharing his healing energy today. And he's upgrading our chakras together collectively. I'm seeing a sort of dusting of our chakras, if we can imagine each chakra being a different crystal or a different jewel. And we're seeing this divine force, this violet flame. Just go to each chakra and just clean it up. Just brush it up. So going through the root, we're seeing perhaps a color red and whatever crystal is there for you. And we're seeing the sacral chakra, which traditionally represents orange. We're just using violet flame to clear, cleanse, and purify and upgrade. And we're going to our solar plexus, traditionally yellow. Same thing. And our heart chakra that has really expanded since the beginning of this call for all of us. Cleaning, cleansing, purifying that with deeper gratitude with this violet flame. We're going into our throat chakra now, which has a sort of blue color to it. And I'm being guided to remind us of the back of our throat chakra and to just look at the back of our chakras always. It's not just the front of our body. Each chakra is a multidimensional portal for wisdom and knowledge and also energy healing. And we're going into our third eye in indigo color. And we're just cleansing and purifying again our third eye and upgrading it into higher wisdom and love and we're going to our crown chakra. And it is vibrating with holy divine light. 
and it's cascading all through our entire chakra systems and beyond into our higher chakras, our 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And we're opening up into miraculous healing. Blessed be. So that was the blessing. Thank you. Brian, would you like to go next? Yes. Thank you. Namaste. Bri, go next. Bri. Okay. Michelle, namaste. Thank you, everyone. Anyone else? Okay, this is all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I have one. I have a comment to make. If that's okay. Yes. I see as I'm opening my eyes that um, there's some threads going on about selenite selenite and water not being a combination. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Again, um, always check, uh, confirm with your other information systems, either your own higher wisdom, or perhaps you want to check with a, an official <laughs> resource book of any information that a channel brings through. I highly recommend you ask yourself and to receive yourself is that the higher information for me to receive for this day so thank you so much for that conversation it looks like selenite and water are not a good com combination so i really appreciate that uh using our higher wisdom to come to more conclusive evidences yes some people find that out the hard way they put their selenite in the water and it dissolves so a lot of crystals you can do that with water but not selenite so but yeah there thank you go. that's a good point <laughs> there we go goes is it the right Absolutely. spelling of your site? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, do you offer private sessions? Yes, absolutely. Yes, just contact me. Um, they're at $100 right now. And you can also follow me on Facebook. My last name is Underwood. So it's just Brooke Alyssa Underwood. And within the few months, uh, my other offerings will be available on my website, but we're going into winter period, so lots of creative energies and also just 
patients as well. So that would be your uh, Facebook, Brooke Underwood. Yes, Brooke Alyssa Underwood. Thank you, Max. That's wonderful. <laughs> right. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, we'll let you go now. It's 9 40, 20 minutes to your appointment. Um, thank you much. And I will take it from here. I will do channeling right now um, in 10 minutes. Beautiful. Blessed to be everyone. It's been a joy to be here with you. Um, I can't wait to return. And my heart is so, so open right now. So thank you from the from the bottom of my heart. So much joy, eternal love to you all. Satnam. Satnam. Thank you. For all right. All right. Take a break for 10 minutes. Now it's 10 minutes. minutes after my um, 9.40 Pacific time. And uh, in 9.50, I will be back. I will do five minute meditation and then I'll start channeling. Um, most likely, I will start in Maku and we'll see how, how it goes. Okay, Max, in the meantime, do you mind if we just have a little hangout time here? And well, thank you. Yes, chat. go ahead. Go ahead, lead, lead the chat. It's still broadcasted and recorded. It's all will be one piece. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Great, thank you. Take it from here. I will see you in 10 minutes. All right. Yeah, we are still live. So, hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> um, uh, that, that was amazing for me. Um, personally, does anybody have anything they wanted to add? I saw a lot of people were giving their thanks and blessings in the different chat boxes we have going on. Um, and this was just so beautiful and so divine because I personally feel like this is absolutely monumental for our um, human collective to reintegrate the divine feminine energies because it has been, as we discussed today, so um, it's been kind of pushed down. You know, there was kind of like this, uh, it got overturned. It went from being balanced to unbalanced. So now we're doing that right now. And, um, and it's the most exciting time for us to be alive so um everybody i just wanted to restate the concept of using water and blessing it and setting intention for it to um do these things do whatever you want it to do because um as they mentioned water is consciousness water has awareness water has memory of everything that has ever happened in all of existence because water is a part of the divine feminine so um that is why it is it reacts it knows it it is here to um assist us and even if say you have to drink some tap water let's say you're extremely parched and dehydrated and you go into a restaurant and the only thing that they have is fluoridated tap water well you can set your intention you can not only bless the water in english in toning in light languages in whatever languages you speak it doesn't even matter it doesn't have to be out loud um, but you can also set your intention and say or think, I set my intention for this water to heal my entire body, to hydrate all of my cells. I set my intention for this water to assist in me releasing all that does not serve my highest divine good. And you are able to drink that and it does not have to impact you negatively like it may have in the past with the intention for your body to release all that doesn't serve your highest good, which I would say is probably fluoride is way high on the top of that list. Um, this is how we're able to consume things and intend because we are all gods and goddesses, as we are awakening to these understandings, we are able to intend for things to 
affect us and intend for things to happen in a certain way because we are the ones creating this reality, not the other way around. It's not the stuff that we see that's that's just there and we have to deal with it. We are creating it. So now it becomes fun because we can get interactive. We can intend for things to go a certain way. And um, can I say something great? So please. Yeah, Christine. Um, I um, volunteer at a horse rescue ranch and um, one of my chores that I've taken on myself is to um, keep the water troughs full and to um, clean them when they need it or if it's not too freezing <laughs> when I could manage. But what I was going to say is whenever I'm filling the water in their water troughs, I'm always remembering water has memory. And then I bless the water. So it's really, it was really nice listening to her talk about the water. Um, I think this is the second time or the third time that we've talked about water on the Hukalo. Yes, yes, and yes. I, I hope that we continue to bring it up because it is so monumental. The um, what's happened to the water on this planet is it's okay. It's okay because again we can stick with that neutrality now that we understand that we're in this illusion of polarity and illusion of. Um, well, everything, but <laughs> illusion of polarity. And, and so it's okay that the water has not been, say, the purest, because now we can intend for it to become pure again. Um, we can intend for our world to have uh, fresh, clean water and food and air and will be the case because this is a co-creation so um i'm really happy you brought that up christine because i know that that makes a huge impact on the horses you take care of because it, it, it's it's just so beautiful so the same goes for pets we have or you know for our families even if everyone in our family isn't sitting there blessing everything um that doesn't matter if you even if you just intend, you don't have to actively sit there and, okay, here I go, I'm sending this energy. You just, you just simply intend. And so it is. That, it's as simple as that. Um, and we're moving out of the, the realms of, of doubt and worry and anxiety and fear and concern and all of these things. We're moving out of that. Those things were important for us before, but it's not anymore. We get it. Now we can move forward. Now we can create what we want to experience based on our highest joys. And these are some of the biggest understandings that have been completely transforming my life recently. So, um, so really this, this whole thing with water is huge and also alkalinity. Um, uh, I was happy that Brooke brought up alkaline water because that is something I learned about a few years ago um, with water ionizers. That are, there are water ionizer machines that are able to restructure the water so that it is either alkaline or acidic um, or neutral and um, pH level, I mean. And um, so there's, of course, you have to be cautious and you can't like over uh, alkalinize your body because it's not supposed to be. But one thing that was huge for me to understand is the fact that disease, dis-ease cannot thrive in an alkaline environment. It's only able to grow in acidity. So for those who have, um, you know, they're, they just found out they have cancer, or they have some debilitating uh, disease or ailment or something, I, I have been finding that alkalinizing the body safely is absolutely huge in changing from dis-ease to ease. There's so many things we can talk about with this, obviously, but I'm specifically focusing on water right now and, and intention. So um, 
I'm blessed enough to um, have parents that have a water ionizing machine and I know that um, you can't overdo it because again it's not healthy but it makes such a difference my parents have healed so substantially from drinking alkaline water and so um, that is something that everybody can look into I just wanted to point that out that if you're able to get some alkaline water and it also stays alkaline only for a while there's a certain period and then it starts to kind of just go back to like regular clean fresh water um, but yeah that's and and also alkaline diets while I'm on the topic making your diet more alkaline and choosing foods yes. that are more alkaline is absolutely beneficial also okay. uh, welcome back Max Hello. Мы начинаем broadcast. Uh, we are starting the broadcast. So I will channel Maku. Bru will uh, med med uh, moderate. And uh, yes. we'll change in the vibration right now. I need like three, four minutes of silence. Uh, you can mute yourself and go make yourself a coffee. And I will meditate. And then um, I'll bring um, Maku with general question. Yes. Uh, next to the right is Galia. Hello. And to the left, can you introduce yourself? Uh, Ella. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. 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 And Natalia, she wants to be invisible. <laughs> In inaudible. <laughs> All right, so I will start my meditation. Um, and if there are uh, questions for the aliens, I will bring them uh, in Nina and she will do the alien part. Uh, Maku is more about other things. Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, so I, I go. Bye. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Hello, Maku is here. How is the sound? It is wonderful. Hi, Maku. Thanks for joining us. 
All right, I will start with a monologue and then have wide questions. Wonderful. The monologue of today is about the unity. <laughs> East and West uniting. This crack in history came out unexpected to us. It was possible, but not probable. Yet, the path is clear lined up. It has been lined up. The need for the world government was imminent was clear, was profound. So any path, any path from the past to the future, any healthy path from the past to the future is through the forming of the world government, potent, strong, clear, vibrant it could have happened in many ways through logical upgrades and steps up through the downfall and collapse of things and through all intermediate colors of the spectrum So, you have chosen the collective, the human collective, the American collective has chosen polarity, the path of polarity, the polarization, division of two poles, blue and red. It's a valid path. It shakes up the status quo. It shakes up the sleep of the world, the global sleep, the global confusion. And as it shakes up, the veil cracks, the veil cracks and clarity comes out awakening comes out much faster it's a very nice and valid way a very nice we welcome it it's your choice and we welcome it the path to union is through uniting of east and west through uniting of secular and spiritual through uniting as your reality divides in different fragments and different polarities these polarities each of these polarities becomes more united within itself because you all are forced, prompted and forced to choose who you are and on which side you are. And as you decide, you are given the energy, you are given the tools, you are given the information, insight, you are given the insight where you are and where to go. So this causes and will cause the crystallization of society, the centers, the crystals, the seeds will cause the crystallization. It's like snowflake that starts from a little, little tiny disturbance little tiny vortex and it grows in a beautiful snowflake so these snowflakes of the new reality 
new consciousness, new understanding, and old consciousness, old understanding will crystallize, black and white, and everything will become much more clear. Until now, it was easy to be everywhere. It was easy to be fragmented. It was normal to be on either side. It, it was normal to be connected to everyone. Now these layers are divided as, as the milk is divided. See, you open, okay. In the old times when, when the milk was natural, it would naturally become sour and divide into clear fraction and white fraction and the cream. Even in these times, if you let the milk stay for a long time, it will finally get sour and divided. Now that infection has been thrown in, that milk bacteria was thrown in and the milk starts to ferment and divide. So that is what is happening. The society globally is now infected, starts to ferment and divide. And as it divides, in each city, in each country, there will be layers which will resonate to each other along across the globe. And that will inevitably, inevitably, inevitably lead to the fold, to the fall, to the fall of the old empires, old empires like Roman Empire fell, British Empire fell, the new Western empires will fall and a new empire, the global empire will rise. And again, it is up to you. It is the choice, collective choice of humanity, how it will be replayed. It can be replayed revolutionary or evolutionary through gradual development. The fall can be negligible or it can be huge. Either way, the path is to the formation of the global government, global coherence, global unity. It can happen fast, it can happen slow, but that is the path. Hmm. What is your role, what is your take what is your lesson? What is your service? What is your participation in this process? It's your free choice. Many other norms, many other rules, many other principles will break, will be broken, will fall apart. Many other prohibitions will fall apart. But the principle of self-determination of free will is the primary principle in this matrix reality. <laughs> Your free will is respected. So you are forced, you will be forced to make choices and some of them will be easy some of them will be self-discovery and some of them will be tough. Because by choosing things, you will have to part this part of you to let go parts of yourself. Take it easy. Take it easy. You wanted it, you got it. It is a beautiful present, a beautiful gift of this incarnation in this time. 
it is the time it is the key time of the beginning of transformation the most bright time of the earth's ascension the most the brightest time of the gaia's ascension you are given the gift of love some love is tough some love is motherly some love is romantic but the energy of all love is brightened up the fire energy is here the dragon the dragon has awakened the dragon energy is here and it will bring unity and it is you who are invited to play the major role in this transformation it is you as individual as a group as a layer of society as star seeds as god incarnated on earth as avatars it's your choice to become a channel of god it's your choice to become a manifestation of divine energy on earth you can choose it you can continually choose it every moment you can pray to become an avatar you can pray to become jesus son of god on earth it is a virtual reality game and each of you are given the body that's for sure each of you is given a body to play a role of son of god on earth if you like i bless you in this wonderful time the death is an illusion The experience is more important than death. The soul comes here in this dream and leaves back home. So it is a dream. But the experience is what it takes home. So the experience is important. The experience of life, the experience of being alive, the experience of being part of the transformation of the matrix reality. That experience is essential what you experience is the key how do you perceive it what do you do with the lesson your take on the lesson your experience your feelings thoughts lessons skills habits the transformation itself is a take-home lesson so take it easy and look up look inside hear the voice of god hear the voice of divine mother be it be it be the hands be the bodies of the divine energy i welcome you thank you I'm open to discussion and sharings and questions. Thank you, Miku. That was beautiful. I'm hearing an echo, by the way. I'm sorry. Um, so we do have a question. I will wait a minute. OK, thank you. We um, have a question regarding the 33 steps of ascension if you are able to comment on that at all
So you are at the step number eight. Congratulations for making this step. Hmm. The ascension is the upgrade of your illusion reality of the matrix. A new program is plugged in step by step. It's a complicated upgrade because it's not the digital code. It's not the wave code. It's all together. It is conscious. The reality itself, the matrix itself is conscious. And it is supported by many, many, great many conscious beings by ascended masters, by fairies, gnomes, elementals, who are each have their own choice, free choices. Angelics have free choice. Yes, even angelics have free choices. They are messengers of God, but each of them, surprise, have a free choice. So this upgrade is divinely guided. As you step up in that upgrade, you are being helped from any, every direction. And one of the directions is reconnection to the programs, download of the programs. of Jesus and Ascended Masters and the fourth density aliens, their reality gradually becomes closer to yours and you get downloads and upgrades with their energies and their timelines. Your timelines were largely separate from the four density timelines. Now, they intersect with your timeline. And you can imagine this timeline is not a little line. It's, you can imagine, again, two layers of milk, white and transparent, white and clear, being mixed up. So the higher level of dimension becomes mixed up with the lower level of dimension hmm. and at some point they will become one as you ascend part of the 3d program will, will be left behind yes a part a big part of the current program of the current reality of the current matrix will be left behind it will not be destroyed or it will not be it will not leave by itself much because the focus of your collective attention will just shift to the new platform to the new reality ascended earth reality so there will be less focus there and so, so there will be less action there the program will still run but it will lose the energy, so it will be less energy there. And your minds will be focused on a higher level, and you will meet new friends and new challenges on the new level. Now, the current, how do you take it? How do you personally take it? There are different stages. Every day, look in the morning, look at the day, sense the day. What do you do with it? Some days are for action, for external action, for doing things. And some days are for internal action, for internally doing things, for self reflection for feeling for shrinking for different days for feeling different days for shrinking collapsing finding your core and some days you just 
go by. You drag yourself through these days and experience the collapsing energy, experience the loss of control, experience the helplessness. It is part of the experience. As things change, sometimes the best action, the, be the best mode of action is to do nothing and just to go through while collecting your experiences and sending them up. So in your meditations, grab your experience from the past period and upload, send them up, send them up and down to the ground and to the sky. Process them, release them through all possible means, including biochemical, biochemical ways of release through liquids, through breathing, breathe it out, cough it out. The winter colds, the fall and winter colds are given to you for releasing things, cough them out, sneeze them out and cough them out. It's time for releasing the past trauma, the releasing the unneeded parts of you I needed vortexes, I needed attachments. That is the stage. And on other days, find yourself, find your new self, discover your new self, define your new self, make a choice, choose a direction and stick to it. And breathe the energy in and absorb the fire energy and breathe it in, bring it in, breathe it in into the new you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Katul. Also, there is a echo again, by the way. Um, Katul, would you like to ask? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, I keep hearing that we have free choice but I also see in my experience that bigger themes are already decided by soul and collectives and higher selves and humans have very small part. Uh, they have too many limitations. They have free will, but with limitations because higher themes are already decided. Is that true? In existence, does a small end and a big galaxy, do, do both of them have same power of will or are larger beings have more power yes thank you yes um uh, your question contains all the answers yes wonderful question um what we can add new to this answer is actually expand the answer which you already pronounced, is that you are given the lessons which you can manage. That's one of the main principles. You are born with a small body, with a small spine, small and developed chakras, and as you grow, your physical body grows and your part of your spiritual body grows in you. And as it grows, it reconnects to the spirit, to the bigger part of your spirit. And as it grows, it is given lovingly more and more sophisticated, more and more tough lessons. And in these lessons, you always have the choice. So you're given choices, but these choices which you are given correspond to your spectrum of vibrations, the range of vibrations. It's up to you on which level of lessons to operate. You can operate on the level of heart lessons of trust, love, mistrust, 
compassion or you can operate on their higher levels like channeling connection to the spirits relationship to the spirits or you can choose to connect on the you can choose to take the lessons of lower level which are survival competition for power communication and so on so you define even the level of the lessons it's up to you which lessons to grab from the shell which lessons to take on the exams and where to make your choices because the lessons are at your reach if you bring yourself to the higher level you can reach to the higher level lessons which are actually more subtle more delicate more subtle more delicate in certain senses so in the new reality the only scene is to lower the level of your lessons and lower the level of lessons of others you wanted to add something so the choices are there you're forced to make choices in each lesson but it's up to you on which level to operate and this level corresponds to the range of your spiritual development it does it's there is a healthy level so sometimes with your with the help of your guru you can be lifted higher and operate on the higher levels thinking about higher level things like the global things and the universal things but often many of us many of you shrink back lower their vibration back and come back to survival ideas to ideas of housekeeping and all other three d ideas 3d it's okay it's okay to oscillate up and down in different lessons yes but high lessons are always available so aim to grow up and be available to higher lessons and as you pray as you ask for level lessons of higher level they are given to you lovingly and the prayer for that is my divine mother i wish to play an essential role in your plans i wish to play an essential role in their ascension i wish to play an essential role in service in helping this reality to rise to a higher level and as you pray you'll be given the opportunity to do that and it comes not only with a challenge but it also comes with an upgrade to your soul so as you invite more challenges on high level you are given the programs the downloads the connections the silver cord lines to ascended masters who give you the wisdom to work on this high level it is that fluid it is that flexible yes the topics are predefined but as you progress through the topics as you ask to move to a certain direction you are given lots of help so it is permissible to shift and move you have tons of choices you do thank you thank you it was very helpful wonderful thank you uh maku i and max i want to bring to your attention it is uh 9 25 your or excuse me 10 25 a.m your time um i wanted to see if you wanted to still take a few more questions let's keep going i will let you know when we want to stop I, i'm thinking about between half an hour and, and an hour more okay Wonderful. Great. We do have some more questions. So um, earlier on, way earlier on, we did have a question from Amran. Now this was geared towards the Divine Mother. He wanted to see if the Divine Mother had um, any messages for him, but uh, you are connected. We are all connected. So um, 
would you be able to pass any messages for him? <laughs> Connect to the idea of fish, and the fish is a symbol of Pisces and the Christianity and the Christ. Connect to the idea of crab, the, so the zodiac sign of cancer. An idea of popping up and connecting to the world, getting out of your water jumping up into the air and connecting to the outside and then diving in and going into inside up down out in out in and the cancer which is having a wonderful protection a strong protection while remaining very sensitive very sensitive you go out you be sensitive be vulnerable and go in and protect yourself with your crust, with your outer layer of protection. Play with both aspects, masculine and feminine all colors of masculine and feminine and the flower and the smell of the rose as one of the highest vibrational smells which is a gift for you to be connected to the divine mother energy the rose thank you thank you so much we have a question from Kina. Um, I hope I'm able to read this correctly. Um, she's asking if we are able to more quickly clear our chakras using the breath of fire technique. Um, and also there's a second part about angels, um, which I, I don't understand, I'm sorry, but let's start with the first one. See if that technique resonates with you. I cannot make the choice for you, but clearing the chakras is the main tool, the main means for their spiritual growth. The chakra is contains the past life experience. Each chakra contains the past life experience and the trauma of this life. So choosing consciously what to let go and how to let go is wonderful. The fire energy is plentiful these days, so use it, invite it, and use it wisely. Understand that burning all the way, all the time, is not for everyone. So burning sometimes, making a fire and flame and firing up sometimes is wonderful and then coming back inside and connecting to the cold dark water energy is wonderful too both of them are essential the fiery energy and the sadness energy the introspection energy the energy of coming inside and self-reflection is wonderful as well Understand that 
being practical is a wise choice. We fully support your idea of being practical. As you open your chakras, tons, lots of information floods in and pollutes you again. So to be clear, to be clear, to be pure, you cannot just open the chakras. You have to set up smart filters, filtering out whatever you don't wish, whatever you don't want, whatever is not yours. And nowadays, it's much easier to see what you don't want. It's, it revealed itself. It's out there. You can point, I don't want that. I don't want even to hear that. I'm aware of you. Thank you. I don't want it in my space. It's not me. It's not helping me to, it's not even my lesson. I don't choose to play this on this level. So setting up the filters, setting up the system of purity is wonderful. So burn out whatever you don't like, and then right away set up the filters. It could be mental filters, and this could be emotional filters. I feel nice about you, but I'm sorry I don't let this trauma to get in and this drama to get into my space i choose to be pure and joyful no matter what i choose to be pure and joyful no matter what nothing gonna change my world nothing gonna change my world nothing gonna change my world that's my advice thank you thank you Maku. so important for us. Uh, we have a question from V. Um, she goes by t funny name, Tarot Fairy on the Prairie, I think. But um, V is asking if you would have any divine insight into her on the path of perhaps becoming a spiritual coach. Okay, wonderful. So I bless every one of you to become a spiritual coach. It's a perfect timing, a perfect role. Everyone, everyone become a spiritual coach. <laughs> do, do become. Coach yourself, coach others. Be tactful, diplomatic and give people not all your vast knowledge, but the next step suggestion and ask them, ask them what, what is their excitement? What is their interest? What is their trouble? And ask right questions. Sometimes to coach, the only thing you need to do is to find one perfect question. And this question can be that very little short, that it could be all that you need to do for coach. Now, becoming a life coach means making it a, a business. And for business, you need certain business talents, certain spiritual talents. So develop them if you like. The fact that you ask the question means you are exploring that idea. So it's already a possibility. And dream it up, dream it around, dream it in, dream it, make it a burning flame. And as it becomes stronger, learn from our from others the art of business, the art of customer service, the art of marketing. It is doable. It is mostly work through the second chakra and the third chakra the second and the third chakra. 
Mm -hmm. So explore it and just start doing it and see how it feels. Start doing it. Do it every day. Do it anyway, even without money. Do it for free. And as you do it more, just do your homework with the business aspect of it and see if it is attractive, see if it is a good place and a good mood for you, if that is what you're supposed to do. It's a valid choice, yes. It is a valid choice. One of several, but valid. It could be just a step or it could be a life lifelong career. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I bless you. I will give you a symbol. Just a second. So the symbol is upliftment. You just uplift, uplift the other. It's a service of uplifting the other. So that's a mudra for you. Uplift the others. It's a service. Thank you. Thank you. That is so beautiful and huge as we are all, I believe, at least becoming our own spiritual coaches <laughs> and maybe helping people in the process. So thank you. Um, wonderful. We have a question next from um, Jody. She is wondering, as a as Max's higher self, if you are able to connect to her higher self and provide her with um, any sort of important messages for her at this time. Give me a minute. Okay, so Jody, right? Yes, Jody Runyon. Jody. Um, first, bricks and water. Bricks are very solid, connection to the solid aspect of life, to the solid element, the element of wood, the element of earth and water. So bricks and water. You're building the wall, you're building a house, you're building a house. And as you do it carefully and nicely, lovingly, you build a house, you build a construction, you go, you communicate with water and the earth, you dig the hole and you might strike gold there as you dig the hole to connect more of dirt. So look it down, look down for gold when you dig. Also, as you work with earth and in new places you touch, the flowers start to grow, the plants start to grow, the new life starts to grow. So as you build a house, build a garden, build a garden, communicate with the plant life, with the flower and may become a gardener. And as you do that hard work, look up, look up. And you see a star which comes closer and becomes an orb. And it's become the orb, an orb, it has rings around it like Jupiter does. So connect to this star energy as well. And then brings the elements together, the star, the earth, the water, and the life. That's the message. 
Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, we have a question next on the YouTube live chat from uh, Race B is the username. Um, and Race B asks, can another parallel reality help me to get rid of the TMAU bacteria? Just a minute. Can you Google what it is? Um, yes, one moment, as I am not sure. Um, it says it's trimethylan, hold on, sorry, trimethylaminuria. It's also known as fish malodor sim syndrome because of the characteristic of fishy body odor. Marine fish are high in it. Interesting. Yes, thank you. Look at your diet. You know the principles of a good diet. Eat the things which are high in spiritual energy and high in uh, the life force. And the things which are high in life force are fresh, alive vegetables, non-wheat grains whole beans nothing processed filtered water nothing chemically treated <laughs> nothing chemically treated yes and consider cooking your food well consider have it cooked well with love and paying attention to the process. Not too cooked, not overcooked, not undercooked. Perfectly cooked and tasting wonderful. Mm. It is all about vibration and the food is the main thing defined in the vibration of that level. The second component as important is breathing. Breathe outside. Be outside as much as practically possible. As much as practical, but be outside and breathe that pure air outside. And if you can, open the window, even the net, and breathe that fresh air which comes unfiltered. And release, release, release the the sorrow it is the sorrow release it and the bacteria is just a manifest manifestation of vibration as you create the vibration it has a space to thrive as you change your vibration it has no space no vibration no feeding energy to thrive it got to go away Self-reiki, self-energy healing is absolutely essential. And watch your pains. And as you feel a pain on your body, in any place, in the head, in any place, just gradually, very slowly, as you meditate, help it, help it to go and get released from your body through your release systems. Release the pain, let it down and let it go away. Give it back to the earth. And if things scratch and become sensitive, if your skin becomes sensitive, your inner massage a little, scratch a little, pet yourself a little, and 
pay attention to these flare-ups and release the energies. And as you release the energies, release the sorrows and traumas attached to them. It comes from past lives mostly. So it's one of your... Mm, assignments in this life to release those and it's a great opportunity to do so i bless you i will give you a symbol just a little bit just a second just imagine yourself washing your hands that would be the ma the mudra washing your hands releasing things from your hands like that thank you Thank you so much. We have a question from Kina. Um, she was clarifying her second question. She said, if consciousness is the point, the more important or light, uh, excuse me, I have to figure out how to word this. Um, <laughs> the Okay, so the more important or light chamber or angelic call. Okay, I'm so sorry. What is the most efficient? Mm. Let's start from reading the, the question word by word. I, uh, okay, word by word. If consciousness is the point, the more important or light chamber or angel call, what is the more efficient? And can you repeat it? If consciousness is the point, the more important or light chamber or angel call, what is the more efficient? Just a sec. In general, it doesn't matter. For you, I would make it an angel call. But it doesn't really matter where you start. Start boldly. Move in one direction, boldly. Just make that step. Make a, a leap of faith, the arbitrary choice of the direction. Just move in that direction. Make one jump. And things will become much clearer from that point of view. For any of the unclear choices. You don't, you don't have to jump too far. At least in your mind, make that step forward. And as you make the step forward in one direction, then the other directions become way clearer. From the point of view where you are, everything is equal. And lots of choices are there. But as you shift your point of attention to the new place where you will be and from that point it will be much more clear thank you okay thank you okay wonderful um we have another question from kina um she just wanted to make sure that this is okay to ask but she uh was wondering if there are any messages for her Kina, you're one of us. You're connected to Ascendant Masters and the Angels. We love you dearly. We are proud of your progress. We are proud of your openness. We send you love. We send you light. We send you help in every way. Shine. Shine and feel connected feel connected you are connected and you are supported thank you thank you Maku. um i would like to go back i believe we're um oh well actually before i ask that 
Uh, we did have a question from Omar on the YouTube Live. He's curious if you can elaborate on the concept of you as Max's higher self. And he was particularly asking if, um, in regards to perhaps what your life was before you, uh, this is, it's confusing, but he said, can you ask him about what his life was before he met Max? So perhaps you can expand. Just a second. It is not a good time to reveal my identity yet, but I was the one who was connecting East and West in my past life. And uh, Max and I have been in previous incarnations many lifetimes. In this lifetime, Max has multiple higher selves. And at this period of his life, I'm stepping up as his higher self to guide this period of life. It is a happy reunion. Having multiple higher selves is okay. It is needed when much impact, much program downloads needed from different areas of expertise. And that's where I provide my experience with connecting East and West and community building. And thank you for the question. You are loved and I send you my appreciation for the connection to this part of the story. Thank you. Thank you, Maku. That's very interesting. Um, I'd like to maybe take that a step further because you did mention when you first started the reconnection uh, connecting the east and the west and ultimately we are moving towards a global community um, where countries will no longer be dividing us religions and um, these ideas of separation such as race or sexuality or whatever it may be. So um, do you have any further recommendations for us as a collective on how we're able to better take steps towards the reconnection, the rebalancing of our human collective? Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Great clarification questions, tons of questions at once. But um, at early stages, it is in no way implied. The global government in no way implies a loss of boundaries, loss of countries, loss of religions, loss of um, national differences. Um, in the early stages, it is just creation of a federation or empire. It is, it will be your choice, collective choice, what form of government is going to be, democracy and so on. But it is just, we are talking about the creation of efficient substitute for United Nations or some other organization or making it work actually, or making it work or replacing it. It is your choice, collective choice, how it's gonna be. But as uh, countries making uh, United Europe didn't lose their identity and culture and so on, as uh, United Earth will, will not be, will not, the countries making United Earth will not lose their identity as well. In the beginning, and then as in Roman Empire and as any other empire, the dominant culture is developed collectively and then it unites 
the empire. So, so right now, we see the American culture greatly transforming the world through television and internet. And it unites the world through television and internet. And even in their farthest areas of the world, cell phones exist where there is no internet, no computers, just cell phones connecting people to internet, no wired connections, just cell phones, smartphones. In their farthest villages of Africa, farthest villages of South America, of any other continent, this unification influence is tremendous. So the world is united through that. The Asian world is united through many other ways, including commerce. Commerce. Euro, Euro, the Europe has united in many ways through United Europe. Now things will be shaken up. The old divisions might be broken and then new alliances might be created. It's up to you how to play this drama. It can be traumatic or it can be less traumatic. But the goal is clear and it is imminent for the earth, unavoidable for the earth to become a part of the galaxy. And to the galaxy, the earth will be one, will be united. As the earth faces the galaxy, as the earth faces the outside connections and offers of help, it is required to be united. It is required to have a united form of representation. So it is unavoidable. It is one of the major divine guidelines, divine requirements. And there is no way out. There is no way to circumvent that. So the forces that lead to unification of Earth get the energy supporting it. It can be peaceful, it can be traumatic, but one way or another, it is going to happen. And we wish you to play a role in it, to think about it, to be involved, and to bring the divine beauty to it, to bring the divine love to it, to bring the intelligence, make it intelligent, make it enlightened. As the rest of the world dives into darkness, you become more visible, you become more shiny. You get the energy, you are given the energy, you're given the love. And your union between each other becomes stronger, will become stronger, it will be, it will be enlightened, it will be fired up. Part of what you do for making it work is one-on-one -on -one connections. Reconnect to each other. As you see each other on the screen, remember your, each other's names. Knock on each other's electronic identity and say hi. One-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one. Write down the names, go connect. Talk to each other. These pairwise connections are absolutely essential. As the rest of the world goes into chaos, you go into unity. 
and you hold the vibration, uphold the vibration. It is essential. Thank you. Let's start wrapping up, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and we're done. Sure. That sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, we have a question. Carolina was asking if Maku is able to assist with her headache in any sort of way. She says that there's been so much pressure in the back of her head. She feels like it's going to explode. And I know she is not the only one. A lot of people are dealing with these strange pressure symptoms. This wave of headaches will be gone soon, will be over soon. But in general, I wish you get in the state where you get no headaches whatsoever. It is possible for you. There are many tools, but in general idea, the general idea is that you're being given gifts of new energies, gifts of new downloads, and they are stuck, blocked, and that's what causes the headache. So be able to accept these downloads as they're given to you as a gift, as divine love. You're being sent love and you're just saying too much love, please slow down. So be able to accept more love, be able to accept more downloads. It is positive thing that comes to you. So get your all your bodies get all your bodies in a state of acceptance so the new programs new information new connections new spiritual connections can function and connect to your all your bodies all of your bodies physical ethereal astral and so on there are Techniques. And meditations. Use your hands and move the pain from one place down, 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 down. Let it slide down and be released. So slowly, slowly, like within 20 minutes, within half an hour, just drag it with your fingers drag it down let it let us go and be released with cough and liquids it is about holding on to the past holding on to the past trauma holding on to the drama go reflect on your love life and remember the drama remember the trauma and just decide to let it go decide to release it it's not helpful the lesson is learned it's not helpful anymore to hold on to it remember your pre adolescent child traumas of non-love of unfairness 
Remember those. Bring them up to the surface and release. Mm. Feel your inner energy and rebalance it. Come up with your prayers. Come up with your energy around you. Come up with the structures which would support and protect your release, your upgrade. You're doing a wonderful job. We love you. You are great. And that's why you get so much attention. You get so much pushed onto you, pushed onto you, so much of downloads offered. Take them. We beg you, take them. <laughs> Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, we also have a question. I know we're wrapping up here. We're almost done. But Michelle was just curious if there are any messages for her. That's a funny image which comes, but imagine yourself riding a sleigh down the hill and the path is already predetermined so you can relax and enjoy the ride. Uh, there is not much you can do outside of your sleigh, but inside there is tons of work, inner work, and it is rebirth of a phoenix. Connect to the idea of rebirth of the phoenix bird. Resurrection. Resurrection. The story of Christmas. Resurrection. You die and you're born again. The sun goes down and is born again in the east. The truth is born again in the east. That is so beautiful, connecting to the Phoenix energy, the understanding. Thank you. We are pretty much done here. Uh, do you have any last statements you would like to make, Mako? Hmm. Okay, thank you. You are suspecting tons of interesting things that happen beyond the veil, and it is true. You are intuitively feeling there is as much change is happening on the surface, even more is happening beyond the veil. As you discover new connections in your life, we are delighted because the old fairy tales, the old uh, stories which were played, the old dramas which were played in many incarnations resurface again. Now this drama is replayed in a new way. It was predicted, it was placed in this location of time it was divinely allowed for this time. And with all the predetermined prompts, programs, suggestions, each of you has a free choice. Each of you, you have free choice. So we enjoy seeing how you awaken and how you start participating in this wonderful play. It is a drama, it is a play, but it is so important. It will not only change you and your life, it will not only change your country and your planet, it will not only change your galaxy and this reality, it will, the wave of your awakening and your transformation will go beyond. It is 
one of the brightest acts of their huge drama, huge novel, which goes in the past beyond Atlantis. And now it is rebirth and replay of old traumas and resolution of the old troubles, the old conflicts. And you are the ones who are making it, playing it for real in this illusionary matrix reality. So I bless you, you are being loved. Discover your connections, reconnect to us, reconnect to your past lives, reconnect to the storylines and become a hero in your journey. Become a hero in your journey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maku. Thank you for joining us today and for your insight and wisdom. Oh, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. If you wish to do some galactic blessings, go ahead. I would love to. I have had one coming to me as you've been speaking. Yanai shoro nai hata kotoro anna e asata o kasha nai auto e atata o soro to anai ha i ana o shoro to akaya hana na e ana ha o so shanai atata i o so akaya na auto a. Namaste, blessings to everyone, everywhere, and every now. I'm sorry, Max, give me one second. I have to unmute you. Okay, you're good. An old woman is cooking, the sun is going down. She mixes the soup in her bowl in the, in the big pot. And as she mixes the soup, the galaxies are born. <laughs> as she mixes the soup, uh, the kingdoms rise and the kingdoms fall. It's all one big circle. And the sun will rise and the love will rise and you will be born again and you will be the savior of the world. Ona Namaste. Dance, 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 dance in circle. Hold your hands, dance in circle. And as you turn to the west, you see the darkness. As you turn to the east, you see the light. 
dance, dance, dance. You're everything, you're everyone. You are the God, you are the earth, you are the fire, you are the water. Dance, dance, and enjoy, enjoy changing your shape. Amen. Amazing. So amazing. Are there any last blessings anyone would like to give? Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Shape shifter mode. <laughs> I believe we are done for today, then. Yes. yes. All right, thank you all. Thank you, Bree, for my sure. Go ahead. Oh. And th thank you, thank you Sorry. for watching. Well, thank you for being part of this concretion. Thank you, my um, uh, guests in this room. And um, uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, we'll continue and um, connect one on one. That's the homework. Connect to everybody. Yes, connection, personal connection. Thank you so much, Max. This has been an incredible webinar. And thank you again to Brooke, who is off doing her thing. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you so much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. That was awesome. Yay, yay, yay. Bye, everybody. End of the Bye-bye.